autism is on the rise. In Australia, we're looking at around 1 in 150 people diagnosed with autism every year. And some researchers are questioning, can low vitamin D levels during pregnancy and early childhood cause some forms of autism? According to some researchers, yes. My name is Christian Flutter. Welcome to Ask Dr. Christian. Let's dig a little deeper. So what is autism? Autism is a type of neurobehavioral disorder characterized by repetitive behaviors and social impairments. In America, the USA, we're looking around 1 in 68 year olds are diagnosed with autism every year. In Australia, that number is closer to 1 in 150. However, that's older data and I expect it to be a little bit higher than that. What's interesting though, is there tends to be certain characteristics, risk factors that tend to be associated with developing autism. Some of these are living in an urban environment, living in a country with a cloudy or more overcast climate, or living in an area of high pollution. Now, what's common with all of those ones is actually low UV. Now, low UV can in turn lead to low vitamin D. And this is what researchers have been looking at. Can vitamin D play a role in developing autism? So what is vitamin D used for? Well, during gestation, vitamin D actually travels across the mum's placenta into baby, where it goes up to that baby's developing brain, and it acts as a hormone to drive neuronal or brain development. So it's involved with the regulation, the differentiation, and the migration of different parts of our nerves around inside our brain there. So this is where vitamin D can become a bit of an aspect in regards to developing autism, right? But the thing is, Autism is a very multifactorial condition. There are many different things that can be involved in developing ASD. Things like seasonal variation. In winter, we don't get as much sunlight or UV light that we need to convert vitamin D inside our skin, leading to a degree of vitamin D deficiency. Gestational diabetes. In parents with low vitamin D status, the risk of developing gestational diabetes was 2.66 times greater. And being born by a C-section, parents who were deficient in vitamin D were four times more likely to undergo a C-section than a natural delivery. Even your genetics can play a strong role in developing autism. If you don't have the right genes for transporting vitamin D or converting vitamin D inside your body, then this is obviously going to lead in to a deficiency of vitamin D inside that person. And in fact, it is the genetic component that is the highest cause or the leading cause of vitamin D deficiency in children with autism. So then how does vitamin D influence the development of autism? Well, you see, vitamin D plays several important roles inside our body. And if you don't mind, I've got a bit of a cheat sheet here because there are quite a few. So first up, vitamin D is involved in regulating neuroinflammation. It's involved in reducing the amount of uh, oxidative species circulating around inside our body. It reduces our risk of developing mitochondrial dysfunction. It improves brain calcium regulation. It's involved in glutathione. In kids with vitamin D deficiency, they seem to have had 27% less glutathione than their counterparts. It's linked with excessive glutamate inside the amygdala regions of our brain, areas of our brain that are involved with fear, fight or flight responses to normal environmental situations. It's involved, it's associated with altered dopamine signaling inside the brain. Now, dopamine is an important neurotransmitter involved in motor control, uh, re reward, emotional regulation and social interaction. So what can we do? Well, if you're living in one of these countries where you're living in an urban environment or you've got the high amount of air pollution inside the air, you may not be exposing yourself to adequate amounts of UV light to convert substances in your skin into vitamin D. Now, this is a problem because our skin is really, really good at converting vitamin D. 20 minutes of midday summer sun exposing our entire body, one half at a time, you can flip over, will get you 20,000 units of vitamin D. Now to put that into context, 
you would need to drink a 375 ml can of cod liver oil or 200 glasses of milk every day to get the same amount. Now, I, I don't recommend doing that because you will suffer from toxicity. So this then leads us into taking supplementation. If you're a breastfeeding mum, you're looking at around 10,000 units, 10,000 IU of vitamin D every day to ensure that you have adequate levels of vitamin D to pass through to your child. If you're a small child, you may need from 5,000 up to 10,000 units taken orally every day as well to really boost that vitamin D level right back up again. Now this is perfectly safe. There are many studies out there looking at the toxicity of vitamin D and you need to take a lot before you get to a serious dose. In fact, there was a study that came out just a couple of weeks ago, in fact, looking at superdosing of 60,000 units of vitamin D to help prevent or reduce the severity of COVID-19 symptoms. There were no side effects from that dosage. So 10,000 units is going to be perfectly safe. So this then begs the important question of, will taking vitamin D cure my child with autism? No, it doesn't work that way. But taking vitamin D may help to reduce the severity of symptoms that you're experiencing. It may help to normalize certain functions inside your child's brain or inside their neural system, even helping with inflammation that's going on. In fact, if you take it as a pregnant mum, it may help to reduce the risk of developing a child with autism. So it's great to get a bit of vitamin D into you. Get exposed to that sunlight, take that supplement if you're needing it. And if you have any further questions, you're more than welcome 